Welcome to Betty King International Ministries and our Word and Prayer series. We greet you in the name of Abba Father and our Senior Pastor, the Reverend Betty King. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining us for the second of our three conversations centered around the word grief. Now, in our first conversation, we got to come at it from the perspective of the one who left. And in this conversation, I would like to look at some of the regrets that we have and the language that we used, and in particular, the word never. Now, if we were to look at the biblical definition of the word never, it reads, in the Old Testament Hebrew, the word never means a ceasing, an end, a finality. While in the New Testament Greek, nevertheless, means to mark a transition to something new. Now, if you ever heard the heartbreak of someone when they start to use the word never and they realize that this has become a reality and they say things such as I will never be able to say the words I love you and hear them say it back I will never be able to say I'm just gonna pop around and see you and have them open the door and the surprise that washes over them we will never be able to say hey let's just go on vacation and know all the memories that we're gonna have based on that meeting. We will never be able to unsay things that we need to. And we will never ever be able to right some of those wrongs. You see, the word never leaves us with so many unanswered questions. So where do we go? If you turn with me to John chapter 16, verses five through seven. In the New King James Version, it reads, but now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Just like in life, when someone goes away, we look for a helper. We look for someone who can speak life into us. And as this demonstrates, we have our first example. We have the place that we go and that we should walk into, that we should turn to. Because after the loss of the bodily presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit becomes our daily guide in our walk through life. So while we may not ever get those questions answered again. We know that someone has been sent as a comforter to stand in the gap. They will be our advocate. They will be our intercessor. They will be our prayer warrior. They will speak life into us if we just listen. So how do we do that? If you would allow me to, I'd like to walk into our prayer for today, which is John chapter 16, verse 12 through 13, using the New King James Version. And it reads, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you 
things to come. How fantastic is that? I just pray that in your quiet time, that you used the verses that we just spoke to, to comfort you, to let you know that there will always be someone, the Holy Spirit, who is waiting for you to pray so that he can speak into you and guide you on your path. To God be the glory alone. Thank you for joining us in the Word and Prayer series. I pray that the Lord continue to love and protect you. Until next time, be blessed.